Hey guys, Bree here from Blossom and Branch Farm. Now you may know that we grow a lot of cut flowers here on the farm. We grow almost an acre exclusively of cut flowers. It's a lot of flowers. And as I've grown in this journey and I've learned more and more about different cut flowers, I've learned which ones are the easiest to grow, especially if you don't have the capability of starting seeds inside. So today I'm going to give you a guide for a four by eight easy cut flower garden that doesn't require any indoor seed starting. Let's go. So when I came up with this plan for a four by eight garden bed of cutting flowers, I knew that I wanted it to be easy and direct sow flowers. That means they're flowers that we're going to plant directly into the ground. We don't have to do indoor seed starting because not everybody has an indoor seed starting area or the time to do seed starting inside. So this is a good one if you just want to put your seeds into the garden and then be done. You can also adjust. Now I made this for a four by eight garden bed because that's what I have. But if you have a different size, you can always just adjust up or down because we're going by square foot and plants per square foot. You can just add or subtract square feet as you need and you can add in other flowers if you'd like to as well. So it's a very flexible plan, but it starts with five main components. So we're going to do Cosmos, and zinnias. Now cosmos have a tendency to get a little bit unruly in the garden, so we're not doing many cosmos because they can get out of hand really quickly. So we wanna make sure that we're only planting enough that we can keep up with. We want to be sure that we're deadheading our cosmos so that they don't go rampantly to seed in our garden and then take over. So we're doing zinnias, we're doing a few cosmos, we're doing sunflowers, and those are all gonna be succession planted. Then we're also going to add in dahlias because they're a great cut flower, they're really beautiful, and they're something that you can save year over year. And then we're also gonna put in mums. Now mums may be a perennial in your zone and they may be an annual. Here in zone five, six, my mums actually perennialize, including the two mums that I'm going to recommend to you today. So they come back year over year. If you're in a colder zone than myself, they may not come back. Hopefully they'll be returning for you in the next season. But let's get into the plan. One more thing to bear in mind is that at the end of this video, I am going to give you recommendations on certain varietals for each of these plants but you don't have to use the colors and the varietals that I am using. So if I'm suggesting queen lime red zinnia, but you prefer different colors and shades, you can have fun with this. All of these flowers come in a nice wide range of colors and shades. So you can really customize this cutting garden to your own preferences. If you wanted to go with all white flowers, you could do that for a more neutral cutting garden, or you could go with all purples or all peaches or pinks. Whatever your imagination says you wanna do, <laughs> go for it. Okay, so here is our plan. You can see that we have a four by eight foot grid drawn out here. And I've just done this so one inch equals one foot. So four feet this way by eight feet this way. This is a great way to plan out your garden at the beginning of the year. It will just give you a good guide for how much space to leave for each plant. So I'm gonna start, I've already started writing out some of these here in the corner. So up here in the corner, we actually are starting with our sunflowers. Now you see on my plan that I have said that this is north, which means that that way is south. We wanna make sure that we're bearing this in mind because this is the way that the sun is going to be coming from. It's gonna be coming from the south if you're in the northern hemisphere like I am. And that means that we wanna make sure our taller flowers are going to be situated on the north end of our bed so that they don't block out flowers on the north side of them. For you, if your garden bed is north this way, you can adjust these squares just make sure that you're paying attention to the height. I have gone ahead and drawn out that I am planting nine sunflowers per square foot in my garden bed. The other thing that I'm going to be doing is succession planting my sunflowers so that I don't get 48 sunflowers blooming at one time. We want to be sure that we're staggering these out. So I'm actually going to be planting these every two weeks. I'm going to start with my first succession here. Now I'm gonna be writing out numbers. Each number corresponds to week after your last frost date. Let's zoom into our plan a little bit here so we can see better. Now, I'm writing out succession plantings. So this is going to be my first succession planting of sunflowers up here. We're going to do these the first week after our last frost. So for me, that's usually around May 15th, mid-May, Mother's Day-ish. So this is going to be planted that first week after last frost. Then I'm going to succession plant the next squares. So these will be empty 
for a couple of weeks. So you'll wanna keep some mulch over this area so the weeds don't come in. And then you can clear that mulch away as you go to plant each of these squares. So next I'm going to go ahead and move over here. I'm gonna be succession planting my sunflowers every two weeks. So this one will be the third week after last frost. This one will be the fifth week after last frost. And this one will be the seventh week after last frost. So this seems late because for me, this would be end of June, but sunflowers are pretty quick to bloom and they're usually around 60 to 90 days at most for blooming, usually around 60 days. So even if we are planting this one in June, end of June, we will still get blooms before last frost. So again, it's gonna give us a nice staggered succession. Now our sunflower spacing here we have done because sunflowers tend to get really, really big if you give them too much space. I like to plant them closer together because that means that you get more manageable sunflower sizes for bouquets, otherwise they tend to get too big. So those are our sunflowers. Now again, you can add in more or less sunflowers, whatever you feel is right for yourself. If you really love sunflowers, put in more. Next up, we are going to be putting in Cosmos. So as I mentioned, Cosmos tend to get a little bit unruly and they also get quite large. So we're not gonna put as many per square foot of those Cosmos. All right, so here we go. We're gonna add in our Cosmos next. And again, we're keeping these taller plants. Cosmos are our next tall plant. So we're gonna keep them over here on this end of the bed on the north side. And here I'm going to put in some Cosmos. So I'm actually only doing about two Cosmos per square foot. I'm going to do Cosmos in this square foot. I'm going to do Cosmos in this square foot. And I'll do some Cosmos up here as well. And we are going to succession plant the Cosmos. Cosmos are a plant that does tend to fizzle out as it blooms. So we are going to succession plant these ones as well because we wanna make sure that we're getting good consistent blooms throughout the season. So I'm gonna plant these at the same time as my sunflowers. So I'm gonna plant my first succession. I'm gonna plant my first one week one after last frost. I'll plant my next succession week three here. And then I will do week five here and I'll do week seven. So again, we'll have a nice staggered succession of quality blooms throughout the season. That way we are not getting a whole bunch of Cosmos at one time and then none for the rest of the season. Be brave with succession planting. I know it can seem scary to be planting later, but Cosmos are another one that are quick to bloom. All right, next up, we're gonna pop in our dahlias and I'm recommending about 10 dahlias. If you have certain colors that you wanna go with in your garden scheme, you can really go crazy with whatever color scheme you want. And dahlias are a great place to do that because you can get very creative with your bloom color scheme here. So I'm gonna put in 10 dahlias. These are our next tallest plant and make sure that you are selecting tall varieties for your cutting garden. If you select varieties that are too short, they're not gonna be good for the vase. All right, next up, let's talk about the next one, which is going to be zinnias. Now, zinnias are another one that we are going to recommend you succession plant. Let's use yellow for zinnias. So I'll put yellow in our little guide up here. And then we're actually going to do the same amount of zinnias per square foot as Cosmos. So we'll do two zinnias per square foot. So starting over here, I'm going to put now, I think the yellow is gonna be hard to see, so let's go with red for zinnias instead. That way we can see it better on video. Okay, so we're gonna do two zinnias in each square foot of our bed. Now, zinnias do tend to get bushy, so I know it can get tempting to put in more, but trust me, this will be plenty. Zinnias are a great cut and come again flower, which means the more you cut them, the more they produce. So we don't have to plant as many as you think, but we do need to succession plant them. These are one that we will benefit from succession planting. So we're gonna succession plant these ones as well. So let's write out the weeks that we will be planting all of these zinnias. Now the dahlias are gonna get planted all at one time, right at your last frost date. These are gonna get planted all at once. However, we're gonna succession plant these zinnias. So we're actually going to do, let's do this group over here first. We're gonna do these two first. First week after last frost, we're gonna stagger these ones just a little bit differently because we have a few more. 
Let's do second week here after last frost. I know that I'm writing a little bit silly because I'm writing sideways here, so I'm sorry about that. These are going to be third week after last frost. Here we have fourth week after last frost. And here we have the fifth week. So we'll do a couple here, fifth week after last frost as well. As these blooms, as these plants fade out, as our succession plants fade out and stop blooming well, you need to be brave and cut them out of your garden. If we leave all of these plants in the garden after they're done blooming, they're not going to do very well. So then you can actually start popping in cover crops into these areas where you're taking out the earlier succession. So Say we take out our first succession of sunflowers, you can put a cover crop in there. If you want more information on cover cropping, you can check out our regenerative gardening class on our website. All right, so the last thing that we're gonna pop in here is gonna be our chrysanthemums. Now, I love chrysanthemums because they're a really nice grow for the fall, and they tend to be kind of fall tones and fall palettes, and I'm giving you a couple of my favorites. We're gonna put those over here, and they do get pretty bushy and they spread, so we are giving them a square foot to themselves and they might even spread and you can always take cuttings from these mums and you can spread them out throughout your garden. So they actually make a great little gift. Chrysanthemum. If you find that they're taking over your garden, you can always trim them back a little bit. So we have our four chrysanthemums down here. We have our zinnias here. These are going to get planted first week, second week, third week, fourth week, fifth week after last frost. Dahlia is planted all at the same time, right at last frost. Here we have our Cosmos. So again, these are planted first week after last frost, third week, fifth week, seventh week. And here we have our sunflowers. Remember not to plant those all at the same time. This seventh week after last frost is going to give you a nice fall batch of sunflowers. Okay, so that's your four by eight easy cutting garden. Now there's a couple things to bear in mind when we're planting this. Now you mentioned succession planting. You should try to keep your soil somewhat mulched until you're ready to succession plant that square. So because we're succession planting this one first and then this one not until week seven, that's lots of times for weeds to grow. You could actually even cover crop these later succession planted squares, week seven, week five, you could cover crop those until you're ready to plant them or you can mulch them. Now, because we're direct seeding into these holes, we wanna make sure that we have a nice seed bed. So once we go to direct seed, you'll want to clear away most of the debris from the top of the soil. So you have a nice clean seed bed for those seeds to get started in. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky is irrigation. So for our dahlia areas, now the dahlias are gonna be planted while we're trying to get some of these seeds established. So irrigation is something I want you to keep in mind. If you have a drip system, we should not be constantly irrigating the dahlias because they could rot. So after you've direct seeded your cosmos, your zinnias, and your sunflowers for that first succession, I want you to hand water to keep that soil moist. Otherwise, your dahlias are gonna get overly soggy. If you're running a drip irrigation system often enough to germinate these seeds, your dahlias are gonna get rotted out. So hand water until they germinate, and once those dahlias pop up and out of the soil and they start to grow, then you can switch over to your regular drip watering system. And they do want regular water, but they don't wanna be soggy. None of these plants in this plant love wet feet, so you do wanna make sure that you have a well-draining soil in your raised bed or in the ground if you're doing this in the ground. And if you're growing in clay, you can dial back on that watering schedule. All right, so let's get to some of my recommendations for some of these varietals now, because this is where it gets fun. Now, I'm gonna give you the ones that I would probably grow. The world is your oyster. If you wanted to save money on this, you could just go with all one variety, but that will limit somewhat the different bouquets that you can make as the season goes on, and I wouldn't want you to get bored with your cut flower garden, so three or four varieties will keep it interesting. Go hit those seed catalogs and have some fun. Let's go through the sunflowers first. The ones that I like are Pro Cut Plum, Lemon Queen, Pro Cut White Light, and Vanilla Ice. Now, Lemon Queen is a branching sunflower, so we have two types of sunflowers. One is branching, one is a single stem variety. So the Pro Cuts are single stem varieties. That means they put off one bloom. But the branching ones put off multiple blooms. So those ones will actually extend your bloom season a little bit. When we're harvesting these sunflowers, you don't wanna harvest when they're fully open. Make sure you're harvesting when the petals are closed because that is going to give you the best base life. So just when one petal starts to lift up and away from that center of the sunflower is when you want to cut those. Moving on to Cosmos, my favorite for good vase life are actually called Double Click. And the Double Click 
have a lot of ruffles to them and I just really like the look, but they also tend to hold a vase life better than some of the single layered varieties. That doesn't mean that I don't grow them, but again, really you can go with color palette that you like. All of these Cosmos tend to have a slightly shorter vase life, so you're going to want to pick them when they're fully closed. We want there to be color to the bud and for them to be just about to open. That's the stage at which we want to harvest Cosmos. If you wait until they're fully open, they're just gonna drop petals on your table. Some of my favorite Cosmo varieties are the Double Click. I'm also trying the Apricotta from Botanical Interest this year because it's very pretty and I just am a sucker for those colors. And then I also like the cupcake varieties because they look like a little cupcake liner and they're just very fun. So those are some that I like on the Cosmos side. And the next one we're gonna talk about is Zinnias. Zinnia has a totally different harvest than the other ones. So first let's talk about variety, then we'll talk about how to harvest Zinnia. My first and favorite Zinnia is Queen Lime Red. It just comes in all these different shades that are really fun. It's kind of a peachy, blushy, reddish, goes with a lot of different stuff, Zinnia. And it's a little bit dustier. So sometimes Zinnias can be very bright and primary color. I prefer peachier myself, but again, it's your cut flower garden. So I like those Queenie Lime Red. I also like the Jazzy series because they kind of have a smaller bloom and that can be a fun little accent in a bouquet. I like the Oklahoma Salmon Zinnia because it's a reliable producer and it tends to have a lot of layers to it and that is a peachy color. And then I also like Mazurkia Zinnia because again, it has the fun double layer ruffles. It's a very beautiful Zinnia. Now, when you're harvesting zinnias, it's different than when you're harvesting sunflowers and cosmos for the vase. So sunflowers and cosmos, you want to be tight when you cut. Not true for zinnias. For zinnias, you want them to be fully open. And what we actually test for is, it's called the wiggle test. So what we do is we grab at the base of the zinnia, we wiggle it back and forth, and we see if there's any flex in the top of the stem. If there is, don't cut it yet, it's not ready. So if the head seems floppy, don't cut the zinnia. You'll wanna grab about six inches below the head of the, of the flower, give it a little wiggle, and if it stays stiff like this, then that means it's good to harvest. Let's get into dahlias. I'm gonna give you my top five. Now I would grow, if it were my garden, I would grow two of each variety so that I have enough of one color at any given time. But again, your garden, you can grow all different ones if you want. So I would grow two of each of these. Jowie Winnie, Cafe Ole, Rock Run Ashley, Ivanetti, and Cornell Bronze. Some of my top producers, and I did throw in a dinner plate dahlia in that Cafe Ole, which means it's just a very large dahlia, it's very showy. Those can be really fun to have for special occasions, but for the most part, for bouquets, I prefer the smaller ball form dahlias because they just last longer in a vase. So that's why the other four dahlias are all smaller ball form varieties. All right, last but not least, let's talk about mums because mums are some of my favorite in the fall garden. It's when everything else, when these cosmos are starting to look ragged, the zinnias are kind of looking run down and are ready to cut those things down and put a cover crop in the garden, that's when these mums come in and start to shine. So these mums tend to bloom toward end of September, so usually the couple weeks right before first frost for us. Two of my favorite mums that I like to recommend because they're tall enough. Now, a lot of times we think of mums in the fall and they're usually short and rounded and small button mums. So these are actually florist variety mums, fancy mums. So the first one that I really like is called Homecoming. And the other one is actually called Chiffon and it has a little bit of a Dahlia Cafe au lait look to it. So I really love that because it has a better vase life than the Cafe au lait Dahlia. Those are the two mums that I'm going to recommend that you plant. Again, two of each so that you have a lot. But if you want to experiment, you could do as many varieties as you want to in this cutting garden. I just wanted to give you this kind of overlay of how to do a four by eight bed. This is easy. Again, if you don't have space to do a full seed starting setup and you just don't have the time or the interest or you just, maybe you killed all your seedlings. I don't know, that happened to me one year. I killed all of my seedlings and I had to direct sow everything. It happens. Um, this is a great option. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video and you want more of these videos, please let me know and I'd be happy to come up with a plan. So let me know what kind of garden plan you would like to see us do next. Please remember to like and subscribe. It means a lot to us and the farm and it really helps us out. Thanks y'all. See you next time in the garden.